20, 11, and 20, 12. So now we are using the new accounting date, which happened to be by April. Now, if we're going to use April, it's still 34, still on preceding year basis, 2009, which must have commenced by 1-5-2008. So the question now is, in the profit reported, where can we get May 2008? So we we'll go to the question. This one ends by October 2007, so May can't be here. This one ends by October 2008. I must have commenced by May, April rather, 2007. So from April, um, November rather, from November to October 2008, the May we are looking for 2008 must be here. So I will have to pull it that out. Now I need profit from, I actually need the profit from uh, May 2008 to April 2009 but I can only get from May 2008 to October 2008 so I have to pull it that out I will pick one Five two thousand and eight to thirty one ten two thousand and eight. So April, May, sorry, May, June, July, August, September, October. That's six months. Six months out of how many months and how much? We are we picking? We are picking from here. 744,000 times 12 times 744,000 744 that's going to give us 372,000 so the remaining period I need now will be from November 2008 to April 2009. Once you have gotten your previous duration, the next month would actually be where you are looking for. So May uh, that we use is here. Then the period we need from November 2008 to April 2009 would also be here. So we also have to pull it 6 months out of 816. So that's another 6 months out of 12 times 816,000. So 816 just divide by 2. That's 408,000. So if we had this up it will give us to give us a total of 372 plus 408 that gives 780,000 so we move to 2011 in 2011 the basis period will be 34 2010 and this must have commenced by 1 5 2009. So we'll now look for where we can get May 2009. The month of May 2009 would be year which we have just created. So 6 out of 816. So we have to parade that out to get what we are looking for. In the period, the year is going to identify or determine where you can um, pull it from 09 
to 31-10-2009. So I can pick 6 out of 12 times 816,000. We have just done that as 408,000. So the remaining one I need is 111-2009. To 34 2010 so to do this I'll still have to go back to the question you always have to visit your question of course we have this starting by 11 and actually ending by 10 so it's exactly the period I need remember that's also made up of six months so the six month profit to get 20,000 if we add up, it gives me 728,000. 728,000. So, I can now go for the third year. In the third year now, our basis period will be 1 5 2010 to 31 4 30 rather. 2011 so we still have to find where we can get that so we need a profit from 110 that is actually given we have this already 516,000 straight away 516,000 so now we have gotten the accessible profit for those three years all we need to do now is to add them together. 780 plus 728 plus 516. That gives us 2 million and 24,000. Then compare this with the initial one, 1 million 952. Now that we have compute the accessible profit under the two methods or two approach will see that the new accounting date gives more revenue or more accessible profit than the hold. So since it's the tax authority that exercise the option, they would assess the company based on the new date. So it means in the Three years identified, we are going to pick the profit for the new accounting date. And by so doing, we can go back to our and um, fill the value. So here we are picking 1 5 2008 to 31 4. 2009 and that is 780,000 then here 15 2009 to 34 2010 that one was 728,000 and here we have 15 2010 to 31 for 2011 which was 516,000 with this you have filled in all the tables and you will get all your full marks the basis here is that you should be able to compute the accessible profit for the three relevant years after which you would now have to do um, your comment. So our comment here is the tax authority will exercise the right under change and assess the company on the new accounting date 
because a higher revenue a higher revenue will be generated so if you're going to deal with the change in accounting date you still have to follow the principle once you identify the year of change pick two subsequent years immediately after that then compute the accessible profit using the accounting date compute the accessible profit using the two new accounting dates too for all the three years identified then by the time you are done with that you do um, the addition of all the three years like we did you had them up whichever is higher is the tax authority because it is the tax authority the tax authority will be the one to exercise the tax authority will be the one the tax authority will be the one to exercise the right of election by picking the higher accessible profit out of the two computations so by the time you do this you are done you get all your marks so the third aspect of cessation that we'll be looking at I mean basis period that I'll be looking at is the cessation that cessation of business or trade uh, you know we have identified three situations in which a business can be assessed under an abnormal basis period it is that the business is assessed be, um, based on commencement change of accounting date or cessation the basis period of assessment under commencement has been considered the basis period of assessment under change of accounting date has been considered now we'll be looking at the basis period under cessation of trade or business now when we talk about cessation it actually means a situation where the existence of the life of a business is brought into a permanent hand this is a situation which arises when a business permanently ceased operation that is the business organization is to be wound up when this occurs the provisions as contained in section 20 subsection 4 of the tax management hat and the personal income tax act section 24 subsection 4 of the company income tax act as amended to date shall be applied that is what the provisions of the tax act regarding cessation of business says will be applied in the process of estimating the accessible profit and um, taxable income taxable income of a company when they seize operation now we have identified what cessation actually means it simply means when the um, life of a business comes to a permanent end why would business fold up or what are the reasons why company fails why business organization close down now some of the reasons business fails is one bad management or decision of the management sometimes we as a um, management team make certain decisions or policies that will be unfavorable decision or policies that are unfavorable to a business now when such decisions or policies are made it um, actually affect the overall 
or long-term objective of a business and as such um, 